In this video, I thought I'd take you through my process of taking either a prototype or something that I've built that I'm using and turning it into a product that I can mass produce and potentially, hopefully, sell. The project that we're going to be converting over today is my laser display that I made for my kids. So obviously the top section is a whole different process. It's gonna be a whole different video of how I'm going to offer these custom designs and how I'm gonna supply them. But right now my focus is gonna be on the bottom on how I'm gonna make these and mass, mass produce these <laughs> one or two at a time. But how to make my life easy in doing that. So I'm just gonna take the acrylic out and just leave the base for the moment. Right now, as many of you might have seen this, but we've got obviously plenty of new subscribers that have come on since I built this, and so you might not have seen this before. But this is basically a custom made laser cut base that I designed, and it's got some electronics inside with a 2.1 millimeter jack on the side, which is a bit overkill in this case because there's only four LEDs in here that you can see. So I don't really need anything more than just a five volt USB one or two amp connection. It's also got some clear acrylic as one of the layers so you can see some cool lighting from the sides when it's sitting down. The rainbow effect looks particularly good. Let's have a look at the electronics inside and see what we need to produce. Okay, so here it is with the lid off. So some of you might remember that I hand built the microcontrollers for these ones, the, the little boards. So there's an 80 tiny or tiny 85 they're called now, microchip own them. With, on some perf board, I've got a resistor that's going through the data line to the RGB strip. I've got a capacitor for filtering. I've got my 2.1 millimeter jack. And that's pretty time consuming to make, obviously. I don't want to <laughs> spend my time making things on perf board. So I created these tiny dev boards. So the tiny dev board is basically a PCB version with a surface mount AT tiny of this. This is exactly what it was designed for, to replace this here. So that's great. I've got obviously, a, here's a tiny dev board with some pixels on it. So basically designed to do the same thing, right? Uh, which way should we do it? Around like this, right? And the power plugs in just there. And here's just another one that I've got that's got power connected to it. It's got a programming header on it. So even this, though, is too much effort to put together. Effort's the wrong word, I apologize. It's not that it's too much effort, it's just too long, too long to do. So we've got a board that we need to assemble, so I need to stencil, assemble, and reflow. Then we've got wires to cut, solder on each end. I've got more wires to cut, solder on the end. Then I have to somehow find a way of sticking it down in the case. The other problem is also, there's more that I want to do with this. So right now it just runs through some code all by itself. There's no capability of turning it on or off. Even if it's not turning the power off, but just cycling the LEDs on and off, or there's no way to change what the LEDs are doing. They're just going through their programming cycle again and again and again. There's also no input on any of this for an LDR, for a way of detecting how much light there is. So I can't dull them or brighten them based on how, you know, whether it's nighttime or daytime. So with my, I don't have it plugged in right now, but with my little fake <laughs> coffee warmer, which is also using one of my tiny devs, it's using the input as a button. So when the coffee gets put on it, it changes its state. And when it gets taken off, it goes back to a different display again. So that's cool. And then my night light that I made, my star night light, has instead of a button, it's got an LDR, which detects the brightness in the room and then changes whether it turns on or not or how dull or bright it is. But I want something that does all of that. And I need it in a way that isn't just lots of wires everywhere because they just take too long to put together. So what I want to do is design something that is basically an AT Tiny 85 board, like my Tiny Dev, that has a button, that has an LDR, that has a USB port that I can just plug power directly with USB. So I don't have to go through the process of doing this. And let's face it, who doesn't have a micro B USB adapter and cable in the house these days? You know, everyone does. And I also want to take care of not having to cut and hand solder the strips, which is also quite delicate. It's quite easy to rip these 
copper pads off the strips. So I'm going to design a custom PCB to replace all of this. So the custom PCB, I have no idea what it's going to look like, right, is going to need to have a spot on it for some pixels, just four, four or five maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll make them closer together so I get a nicer display, but I'll just put four there for now. And ideally we want it to sit in the middle because we want the acrylic to sit over the top like this. So we need to somehow have a USB port uh, either on the side or maybe at the back. So if we treat this at the back, maybe we'll go put a USB port over here. I'm putting it on this side just because I'm just thinking of where it is, where these are currently in my house, where my kids have got them, and the power comes in from the right-hand side. So I'm just going to put it on the side there. So we also want a, a button to be able to control it, and we don't want the button visible. So again, maybe we'll put the button behind it. I don't know what type of button we'll put, maybe one of my right angle buttons that I've got that I use in my Reflow Master. Because we want it sticking out of the back of the case. And then we also need an LDR somewhere, just something that's sitting away from the lights, facing away from the lights, so it can just pick up ambient light. So I don't know, we'll just stick it next to it for now. So if, if there's an LDR here that's just facing maybe on the outside, maybe there's a hole on the side of the case that light can get detected on. And then of course we need, you know, a, uh, I don't know where I'm going to put it, but we need an AT-Tiny on here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We need uh, some programming headers on here. It'd be nice to be able to just have a programming header that's always in there that I can access as I'm developing and building that can even stay in there and people can maybe hack this to program it to do whatever they want in terms of a light display. So we need that, we need, what else? I mean, obviously caps and resistors for power filtering, for all sorts of stuff. We need, um, we need like, you know, a resistor next to the LDR. We'll need a resistor next to the button to pull it either low or high, depending on how I'm going to have it. The USB port will only be for power, obviously, because there's no USB serial interface for the ATtiny85 that you can do data through here. That's what the program ahead is for. So the USB will just be for power. So somehow I need to put all this together on a PCB so it's fully contained. So it's one assembly, there's obviously some surface mount to put on there and then there's some hand soldering, but there's no cutting of wires and soldering wires and having wires everywhere and trying to, you know, stick a strip down and stick a little tiny dev down and somehow stick and mount a button and stick and mount a power, a power source and stick and mount an LDR. It just doesn't make any sense. The idea is to make something that's a one board that has everything on it that can sit inside here, that's very easy to assemble, that maybe doesn't even get screwed in, maybe there's a 3D printed base that this sits in and it's got some holes in it maybe, I don't know, maybe one there and one there and one there, and there are little pokey things that pick up from the bottom of the 3D base that this just plugs into and sits there. And then of course it'll need a case to sit in and Moulding a case that has side holes and things like that is very hard to do with laser cutting because obviously we laser cut in layers so we don't really have the ability, like if I was to put a hole here and a hole here, that piece falls away. <laughs> so that doesn't really work, right? So I'm thinking of potentially designing two different cases for this. I really love the acrylic case. I love the way it looks and I love the fact that there's a clear piece in the middle. That's just the layer effect looks quite nice with the screws in there. It looks quite fancy, but obviously there's a bit of acrylic here, there's a lot of cutting time, there's different types of acrylic. Um, this version is fully glossed. I've also got the, the other one that's in my house right now has got a matte finish, and they both look really nice. They just look different to each other, but they both look nice. Uh, actually, you can see the matte finish just here, maybe. I don't know if you can pick that up on camera. It's not very shiny compared to that side, which is shiny. So I'm thinking of doing like an acrylic case, but also doing maybe a 3D printed case. So maybe there'll be a 3D printed fully, fully assembled case that's in two parts that screws together. A base, the same base that works on both, but then a 3D printed top for one version and an acrylic layer top for another version. I think that might look nice. Gives people choice. So that's what I want to do. So the next step is going to be to make a PCB out of this. And I'm not going to bore everyone with going through the process of designing the PCB because you've all seen me design a PCB many times and 
I don't even know how it's going to look yet. I, I, you know, I could spend half an hour designing this and it's great and I might spend three days iterating over it. So I, I don't really know. So I'm not going to bore everyone with that particular process. But what I'm going to jump to next is what I hope will be the finished PCB design for this that I can discuss with you before I send it off to get it manufactured. So let's jump to Eagle. Okay, here we are in Eagle and this is the schematic. I was correct. I actually spent two or three days refining this, playing with it, sketching it up, umming and ahhing, you know, second guessing myself. The usual process when designing a PCB, checking it, double checking it, triple checking it. But this is the final schematic. So we've got five 5050 NeoPixels or WS2812Bs or SK6182s or whatever 681, whatever they are. We've got five of them. I've got them quite close together. I've got caps on each of them. I've got a 330 ohm resistor on the way in. I've got my micro B USB port sitting here. I've got, I think I might have this resistor wrong. That should be going to ground. There you go. Found another mistake already. Lucky I hadn't sent it off yet. So I've got my USB coming in. I've got a button set up that goes to pin or oh, 2R. So uh, pin 2R is uh, PB3, so number 3, and it's also going to ground. I've got a Navy R header, 6 pin header. I've got my LDR that's also got a 10k resistor on it, and that goes to 3R, and 3R is PB4. I've got a reset button again, just for programming, having the reset button there, and that's also pulled high because obviously. Reset needs to go low to reset the AT Tiny, and here's the AT Tiny 85 with a, a cap coming in at 0.1 microfarad cap. So it's pretty straightforward. Not a lot on there. Let's have a look at the PCB. Okay, so there it is. I might turn the the bottom names off and bottom place off. Get rid of the text just so you can see everything. Okay, so that's pretty big right now on the screen, obviously, but it's actually very small. So if you look at how big the USB port is, so there's no way of just going to normal scale, I don't believe, in Eagle. If there is, someone let me know, that'd be fantastic. I would say it's actually about that big. If you look at the size of the USB port, that looks about right, maybe. So it's quite small. Quite a small board. And what I decided to do was, it's a funky shape as you can see, I don't have any curves on it or anything, it doesn't need any curves. I've got two holes for holding it still. I didn't have a lot of space, I didn't want to extend the PCB out further to put a hole on this side, but those three should keep everything nice and still. It doesn't need to actually hold anything. I've made the PCB stick out, so that way I can actually have the button and the USB port really close up to the edge of the case and the PCB, I mean even if you see the corner of the PCB on the case, that's fine, it's at the back. So the idea will be that there'll be a hole at the back for the USB port for the button and for the LDR. The LDR will push out this way, out the side, and I'll build a case that fits nicely around that. As I mentioned, there'll probably be a 3D printed case at the bottom and then either a 3D printed top or layered acrylic on top. So that's pretty much it, that's the board. I'm going to obviously fix this here because that should be going to ground, very silly. And I'm gonna send these off for manufacturing. I hope I remember to fix this before I send them off. If not, I will just bridge this and not put a resistor here at all. Because this is supposed to be a discharge resistor. So that's all it's really there for. So it doesn't even, it's not even really needed anyway. So let's see if I remember to make this change or not. But that's the board, let me just uh, fill it. It's got copper on the top and the bottom. It's a pretty straightforward board, but it's one assembly, everything I need's on there. I can supply these as a kit for people that want them as a kit. I can supply them completed. It's much easier for me to assemble five of these in a row than it is to do it the other way with the tiny dev and lots of wires and soldering wires to the board and to NeoPixels and to the power and there's a separate switches and stuff. Much more production line friendly. So this is the end of part one. 
Part two will begin when I get these boards and I assemble one and we can look at designing a case, a bottom and the tops for them as well. And then in part three, I will try to work out how I'm going to offer customized laser cut acrylic for the top to go in where people can put their names on and I can grab their names and lay it all out and cut them up and then ship them off. So I hope you enjoyed this, just a little bit of an insight into my brain and the way I go about trying to productize, is that a word? Turn an idea or a something that I've already made into a manufacturable item that's uh, easier and quicker and more efficient to manufacture, that's more stable and has less points of failure on it. Okay, thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.